You okay, people? I hope so. Yodo school, greetings. Good evening. Welcome. Some of you were here before me today. That's awesome. Do you hear the door? I've got to get some oil on that door. Oh, shocking. It's a job for Monday morning. So, uh, Friday. Show number 12. I can't believe it. I'm going to calm down next week, not do so many shows. I thought the internet was going to fail, but it's, st it's still with us. We're still online. It's good. It's a good feeling because it's, I mean, not only, if, obviously, if it's what's keeping us in contact, isn't it? It's one of the only things that's keeping us in contact now. So what's been happening? Super Joe crawled downstairs this morning. You know, first thing. Half ten, eleven. <laughs> and usually the first thing he says is, what's to eat? And today's he says, so I've got a grey hair. He's 16 years old, man. That's what two weeks of isolation has done to him. Terrible. And his name is Hare, he's Joe Hare. So just now he's Joe Grey Hare. <laughs> oh dear. Joe Hare Davis. Joe Grey Hare Davis. And of course his, his haircut is... Um, week overdue and it absolutely will not let me near him with, with my clippers so, but you know he settled down it's only one and then the second statement of the day was um, what's for breakfast and the third statement was what's for lunch <laughs> oh dear dear me dear me dear me so uh, I heard on the news that we, we lost Bill with us and uh he was quite old, but um, what a man, what uh, fantastic songs. Had. Lovely Day, Lean On Me, and uh, 
So it would be churlish not to uh, kick off today with a Bill Withers song. I know you'll be singing along to this one. For Bill, good old Bill. Just great songs, great to play, and uh, good melodies, good sentiment. Yeah. Lean on me is a beautiful one. It's a good one for these times too. Eh? Where would you be without somebody to lean on? I hope you have somebody to lean on. And uh, if uh, if you're nearby, give me a ring and uh, you can lean on me on the phone. We need each other. Well, I've got the the alto in my hand. It's, uh, we're expecting uh, some lovely spring weather this weekend, aren't we? Is is a tune called um, "It Might as Well Be Spring." Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
might as well be spring. I guess it is. So a weird time for the youngsters because uh, they're just starting, or would it be, <laughs> just starting their Easter holiday. But um, well, they kind of are, but they kind of aren't. And uh, yeah, me and me and uh, Sulky and Joe Greyhair, we would have been going off on our holidays today. But instead of being on the phone trying to get the money back for the flights, <laughs> I'd all about shovel some money. <laughs> ah well, that's reality, isn't it? That's reality. Um, oh, let me see if anybody's with me. Flicked my chat page. Oh, loads of you. Oh, are you complaining, saying you need me every day? Oh. Katie's also mourning Bill with us, but celebrating him too, of course. Richard and Anna there. Sue Chan's back. Annie Lane. Uh, <laughs> Duncan Grantman, you're winding me up. You're drinking a Japanese Roku gin and tonic in honor of the haiku and Yanagazawa. Fantastic. More about haikus later. My good mate Duncan Grant, he's a southerner, but he's all right. He, he set us a challenge. Well, he set the, all of you, all of us, a challenge to write a haiku. Is, um, if you've been listening all the time, you'll have heard me reel off a couple of haikus. I'm a, a bit of a haiku fan. And he said perhaps we could do some saxophone-related ones or, you know, could make it wider. Let's say music-related, snaky-related. And uh, we do have the first couple in. We'll have them later on if I've written them written down. And... Uh, some of you, some of you probably having your evening meal. I can never eat until after I've played because it just feels it feels wrong, you know. It kind of sits in your stomach, and obviously, what I'm doing, my job, it's breath powered. It's all about the air, all about the breath. So I have to wait for me tea until I'm done with you guys. <laughs> but I did have a sneaky drink. I had a virtual drink get together with my mate Alex, who's uh, down the road. We had a nice little beer gazing at each other on our phone screens and a little catch-up. That's what you got to do now, isn't it? And uh, he's always teasing me and what was he telling me? He seems to have sussed the um, isolation thing better than me. He's got all these deliveries coming, trays of cakes and what else was it? Oh, boxes and boxes of Piper's crisps. Other crisps are available, but Piper's are nice and they're made up here in North Lincolnshire. So I'm going to take a leaf out of his book. Need some crisps. Oh, look, there's millions of you. John Milson's back. Joe's back. I don't think you've missed one, Joe, have you? Oh, uh, she's in Havant, so we haven't, I don't know. Haven't, haven't. Oh, guten Abend, Claudia und Mia. Sue has just got a wine at the ready. Friday evening has started. Richard Lyons back. Celia, got a lovely message from you today. Thank you very much. And a picture of your pond. Oh, man, i got pond envy. David Matthews. Oh, Yak, you and you, Yak. Sharon McGarry, you and you too. And Judith is back and Chris Backhouse is here. Chris Backhouse, Wakefield or Leeds, maker of very, very fine whistles made of maple and other woods. Really beautiful, great craftsman, Chris. Chris Backhouse whistles. The Reverend Danny, it's a snake o'clock. <laughs> Delta Rana, I got your request. I'm going to work on those for next week. Super. Jeff Thompson. Oh, thank you. Yay! Chris is on board as well. Toot toot. <laughs> Hi, Simon. Oh, look, Charlotte's back as well. It's a flipping quality crew we got on board. David Petrie. Good to see you. Julie, too. Ian and Judith. Oh, Craig's on the whiskey, the idol later. I'll finish my whiskey. I've got a little drop left, so I went on to the brandy last night. Um, a cider brandy from Somerset that my mate Will Mowat gave me. It's very nice too. And um, 
and it worked. And he's, uh, he's isolating in the French Alps. He's a little bit jealous about that as well. <laughs> the idolator that Craig Davis is drinking. Anyway, we don't want to talk about food and drink anymore. Or we'll all get too hungry and thirsty. Well, I will, I think. I think that's what I meant. I will. So um, what we should do is probably have another tune and then a haiku maybe. Did I write the haikus down on my list? Oh, we'll find out. If I haven't, then... um, Haven't. (laughs) If I haven't, then we'll have them another night. So I thought I'd whip the flute out. The poor old flute doesn't come out that often. It's only been out once. I was going to say on this tour, this tour of Snaky Shed gigs, this tour of the same venue. <laughs> when we play the same venue every night, we call it a residency. And uh, you know when you're on the move, you're living out of a suitcase and out of the the tour bus. When you get to stay in one city for two nights, sometimes even three nights, what a luxury that is. You know, and sleep in the same bed for maybe four nights running. That is fantastic. But this is a little bit different. Been, I've been in the same venue for 12 shows and three workshops now, but I'm not complaining. It's it's fine down here. Down the bottom of my garden, it's fine. So I started on the flute before the saxophone. I was relatively late to wind instruments, but I'd been doing music since I was a little chorister and learnt piano, learnt some guitar when I was 12, 13, classical piano lessons when I was nine, ten. But I came late teens before I picked the wind instruments up. And it was the flute first. And then I realised, or decided, that for me it wasn't really cutting it. It wasn't earthy enough. It wasn't dirty enough. It wasn't loud enough. It wasn't rough enough. But I never stopped loving it, honestly. And uh, But it sometimes it doesn't... Uh, I always practice it, but sometimes I don't play it for months and months and months. Um, but I do enjoy playing it. So I'll give you a couple on this. This is a riffy thing that I just came up with a few years ago, and it kind of busks along quite nicely on its own with no accompaniment. And it's called Funky Shoes, Funky Flute. And I use a kind of... Um, remember Jeffrey Toll, Ian Anderson... He had this sort of percussive. You know, he didn't play all pretty, like. Didn't do any of that. It was always. It's all that kind of thing. And I really like that. I don't know if it's got a proper name. It's like singing through it or shouting through it or overblown flute. Somebody will tell me what it's actually called. But it's good anyway. So you can't see my bottom half, but obviously I'll be standing on one leg when I play this. You have to be old enough to have been a Jethro Tull fan to have that image of Ian Anderson standing on one leg, busking away on the flute. So this is Funky Shoes, Funky Flute. Thank you. 
Funky shoes, funky flute. How can playing the flute make you breathless? This poor little innocent. Actually, it's, it's very physical. My job is very physical, blowing down things. I'm using the air. I'm like a sportsman. That's what I say to my students and at workshops. We're just as physical as um, any old sport. So I wanted to play you one more piece on the old um, flute. And uh, it's a piece by Debussy. And it's called Syrix. And I have the sheet music for this. This is one that I don't know off by heart. Um, but guess what? I couldn't find it. Because I'm a scruff monkey and my studio's a mess. It's, oh, it's a good job that camera's static, honestly. I'm ashamed. That's what I'll do early next week. I'll spring clean the studio. I promise. You have to ask me when, we, when I come back at the end of next week. Say, Snakey, did you sort the studio out? Okay. Oh, it's a bit. So I found it on the internet, the music. It's a bit small. How can I make it bigger? Is that a. No. <laughs> no, I don't want to change the notes to any size. I just wanted to make it full page, but I can't. Okay. I'll just wipe my glasses. Every night when I do these things, and there's always me and me and Joe Gray hair are running around like blue bottomed hairs, sorting everything out. And uh, I have a last minute bathroom run, and just just like uh, some of the pop stars that I work with, I used to laugh at. Always having to have a last last minute bathroom run, and then I. Change my shirt. <laughs> I almost forget to clean my glasses. All right, oh, I'll have a go. Now, it's only a bad workman that blames his tools. So I, I cannot say if I make any mistakes that it was because the notes are small. So I mustn't make any mistakes. So this piece, Syrinx, written by Claude Debussy in 1913, and uh, it's based on the story of um, the, the god Pan, wasn't it? And uh, I can't remember the story exactly, but it's all about he was chasing some nymph and uh, one of them turned themselves into a reed, didn't they? Was it Pan or was it? It was, must have been Pan. <laughs> I wish I had the story, that story. I think it was Pan who turned himself into a reed. And uh, so the idea is that um, he was playing, oh, I don't know. Or was it the, the, the fawn? Oh, I've got really confused about that story. I'm going to learn it for tomorrow. <laughs> but it is based on a myth about, not a myth, a legend about the god Pan.
Syrinx Debussy. Oh. Drives you crackers technology, doesn't it? I had those notes big earlier on. <laughs> so that's the flute. Goodbye, flute. So I found one of the, the hikers, and it's from um, Annie Lane. So she was first in with the hike with the first haiku. And uh, you go five syllables, seven syllables, five. So well, you, I'm sure you know that anyway. Um, so hers is about the shakuhachi, not about the saxophone. So here it is. Calm shakuhachi. Good snaky inspirations. My isolation. Yeah. Calm shakuhachi. Good snaky inspirations. My isolation. That's cracking. <sighs> and I did one, but I don't think I can remember it. So, um, and I don't know where I wrote it down. So we'll have that one tomorrow. And I'm sure you're working on one, Duncan, aren't you? Because it was your idea. It was one of your many good ideas. What are you saying to me? What are you saying to me? Oh, imagine seeing uh, Ian Anderson in a church. That's, that would, I bet that would be brilliant. With Aid Edmondson. Oh. <laughs> that would have been fantastic. Oh, Pauline Roof is a Debussy fan, in which case I apologise. <laughs> Saxophone haiku. Oh, here we go. Got another one. Let's make sure I'm. I'm just going to rehearse it in my mind before I read it out. <clears throat> the saxophone sings. My spirits lift. It's soaring. All is happiness. <sighs> Oh, I love it. <laughs> That's absolutely brilliant. And another one from Yak. Right. Let me I'm rehearsing this one in my mind. Chromatic sundown. A snaky waterfall plays above the cascade. Oh. This is amazing. I so enjoyed doing these little stream shows from down here in the shed. And it's, it's teamwork. It's me and Joe Greyhair and Sulky Sally making the shirts and keeping me on track. This has sent me Annie's haiku by the wonders of modern technology. I love the way you guys just start talking amongst yourselves and answering each other's questions and we're getting the getting the haiku going. That's beautiful. So we're a family, guys. We're a family. Hmm. Graham Horton's just done Pilates to the new album. Oh, I haven't... It's half past seven and I haven't mentioned the new album once. It's album launch week. I'm a terrible businessman. And everybody seems to be really loving it and... I still love it. Sometimes when the albums come out, I'm fed up. <laughs> I shouldn't admit that. Because I've heard them so many times. But I'm still loving my album, um, Time Stands Still. And it really is. It's, it's all drifty and smooth and gentle. And you'll maybe have a track, have a couple of tracks from it on Sunday, perhaps. Um, and it seems to be doing the trick. And for once, I brought the right album out at the right time. And so Graham's been doing his Pilates to it. And I had a lovely message from a yoga teacher who'd done a yoga session to it today. And that's just what I wanted. So I'm happy bunny, a happy snakey. And of course, here's the commercial break. You can order it from our website. Or if you're in the village, <laughs> you can give Sally a call and put one through your letterbox with our gloves on. Ah. Oh, three haikus. That's amazing. You don't need mine. I'll have mine tomorrow. Michelle Rimmer's back. Family feeling the love. And she's even doing that. 
Unbelievable. Uh, I'll give you a quick Basho one. Uh, I, I did give you this a few nights ago, but hey, you might have forgotten. Um, Basho, Basho means banana, I think, in Japanese. Um, Matsue Basho, uh, the most famous haiku writer ever. It was about three centuries ago, I think. Um, Samidera ni tsuro no ashi mijikaku ni nareri. In the summer rains, the legs of the stalk become shorter. Which in English is not enough syllables, but <laughs> who cares? You don't want to get too hung up on these syllable, this syllable malarkey, do you? Honestly, don't worry if. Don't fear, you have to do the 575 thing. I came up with one for Duncan today, which I said wasn't worthy of broadcast. What was it? (laughs) It was about the saxophones. Because he pointed out to me that the saxes that I play, Yanigasawa, Yanigasawa, is five syllables already. So that's 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 your first line there and then. So, um, Ichiyami saxophone. Yanigasawa Ichiban Saksu Hondes Kakoi Oto. Yeah, I got it. I'll give it to you again. Yanigasawa Ichiban Saksu Hondes Kakoi Oto. So that means Yanigasawa, number one saxophone. Beautiful sound, cool sound. And I did have a translation of that which went 575, but it's in another folder somewhere. I can't find it. Jeff is asking, this is a good question, whether my studio is larger than Simon Thackeray's original shed at Broby. I would say it's about the same because we can get 45, maybe 48 people in here at a push. I think that's about what the shed used to hold. They were happy days. The shed was a, a such a quirky, quaint, beautiful little village hall in Broby in North Yorkshire. And um, is it the Vale of Pickering? Um, just one of those magical gigs. Superb. A few of you have got the CD already. Yes, Alex. Have you down the all, all four pints yet? <laughs> uh, Stephen's back. I'm going to reply to you again, Stephen. I've got to get you sorted. Stephen's the fellow saxophone player who's had bronchitis. Nothing to do with this current thing that's going on last year, and still, <coughs> still coughing and wheezing, which is, as you can imagine, not brilliant for playing the sax. But I've got some ideas up my sleeve. Um. Oh, Duncan saying when that when the the dentist get when he gets back to his dental work, he'll be playing the CD to keep the patients relaxed. What a brilliant idea! Mm, marketing, my marketing bubble is uh, coming. Right, more music. What shall I play? Um. Give you something on the tennis sax. We'll have another piece of mine called the Dean Street Blues. Thank 
The Gene Street Blues, composed by the Snake for solo tenor saxophone. Unavailable. <laughs> Not loads of people, but people do request that they say to me, uh, "Where can I get hold of your music?" And uh, you know, so they can play it on their own saxes. And usually, the answer is you, you can't get it because I never wrote it down. It's just up there. <laughs> Some of my pieces I wrote down, but not many. And uh, sometimes other people write them down, which is it's kind of odd. It's um, it's, it's a nice feeling. And uh, but I think, wh- wh- why would you write my tunes down? And uh, there's a fellow from Australia who's doing a PhD on, um, I can't remember exactly the title, but something like pop saxophone solos. And he said, could he interview me? And he was he was really doing a sort of hop around the world inter- interviewing different uh, session saxophone players, guys who played on um, records, what got famous. And uh, he'd just been to New York and he'd been interviewing Andy Snitzer, who was one of my favourites. He did the solo on... Um, Waiting for a star, boy meets girl. So all I wanted to do was ask him about that and what Andy had had to say about how he did that solo and his approach to session work. But he wanted to talk to me about my M people and Lisa Stansfield and all that kind of thing, solos. And he arrived and he'd written a bunch of them down. And it was a bit weird. It was like seeing yourself in the mirror. Somebody had written my uh, my solos down. He gave me a copy, but I lost them. I mean, they're in this room somewhere. Well, I haven't seen him for two years, which is about the time he came to interview me. Now, one day they'll turn up. Maybe they'll turn up in my spring clean next week. I suppose that's one of the things that many people might be doing in this period of isolation, spring cleaning. Um, I spoke to my mother-in-law from a safe distance. Is there any safe distance (laughs) that you can have between you and your mother-in-law? Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. It just came to my mind. It's 50 yards, isn't it? Is that a safe distance from the mother-in-law? No, I was about a good three metres away. And then we had a conversation. I said, what are you up to, Hazel? She said, I'm spring cleaning. Then I'm going to do some baking. (laughs) Um, Which is normally a good thing, but I suppose we won't get any. Or will we? What contact can you have with these people who are isolating? Are you allowed to accept cakes from them? <laughs> I'm off on one now. I'm thinking about food too much. I suppose that's because um, I'm hungry. You know, I admit it. I'm hungry. Uh, oh yeah, my mate Simon's dropped in again, and uh, he's got a. Uh, He's got a tune. This is one that he recorded on his latest album. His latest album is called Recuerdos, which I think means memories. And he's a huge Latin music fan, is is Simon. Simon, some of you will see him in uh, various Snake Davis band lineups. He's the bass guitar player. And bass guitar player extraordinaire is what he is. He's an unbelievable player, lovely fella, amazing technique, fantastic musician. And he has in abundance what we call in the trade chops. In other words, he's flipping brilliant. And uh, in fact, he's like superhuman genius and the rest of us are just mortals. That's, that's the way it feels. That's what it feels like playing with Simon. Constantly kind of bowing to him. But he's a good fellow and he's dropped in today with a piece called Lagrimas Negras, written by Miguel Matamoros, which is a good name. Um, so we'll have a go at this. And w- when Simon first suggested we do this, you know the thing I did with the flute, with a kind of growling, shouting through it, and it's the the growl on the saxophone is um, well, it sounds like this. <laughs> Um, it's something that we kind of, us saxophone players, we just chuck one in now and again in a bit of a growl. It's like a flourish, like a Pink Panther type thing. But there was a, f- a fellow that I used, used to really love, 
well, I still love him, but I haven't heard him for a long time, called Gato Barbieri, New York chap, but obviously with Latin roots with a name like that. And uh, he put out a bunch of albums, I suppose it would have been probably in the 70s. And uh, they're fantastic. Sort of Brazilian music, um, Latin music, and played in a really fiery way. And uh, this, 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 I've got it all on vinyl, so I haven't heard it for ages because, um, well, my daughter waltzed stuff with my record deck, but I didn't have it plugged in anyway, cause like many of us don't. Why do we do that? That's what I could do in all these weeks of isolation. Procure a, a record player again and play my Ghetto Barbieri records because I haven't heard them for decades. But then I got to hear um, Gato Ghetto play in New York about three years ago. I actually went over for a long weekend not playing, went over without a saxophone. It was amazing. And uh, he was playing in a club and I thought, oh, so we've got to go, got to go and see Gato. And uh, he was over 80 years old and had to be helped onto the stage by one or two of his sons and obviously sit down on a stool to play. But when he got going, he could still do it. I thought, that's hope for me. I might have a decade or so in me yet. That was, that was impressive and respect to the man. But anyway, I'm rambling. And the point is that when I heard this this tune, the, what we is going to play, that Simon introduced, I thought it needs a gatto approach. I'm just going to growl my way through it if I can. So I'll give it a go. Right, need to put my music out. Need to get some headphones on. And then invite Simon into the party. We can do it. There's the mouse eating headphones. Minus the nice little padding bit that they used to have before the mice ate it. I was talking to my mate um, and some of your mates as well, uh, Paul Birchill, keyboard player, wonderful keyboard player. I was chatting to him yesterday and uh, he lives in uh, a flat in Chorley and uh, there was two of them and now there's three of them because they got a rat and he was telling me about the uh, the process of trying to um, escort the rat off the premises basically. It hasn't worked yet. So there's still three of them. So um, we await more updates about um, Birchie and the rat. I'll try and keep you posted. So, ready to go. <coughs> Are you ready, Simon? Lagrimas Negros. Are you there, mate? Are you there? Yeah, <laughs> there he is. Fantastic.
Yeah, boy. <laughs> well done, mate. Well done, mate. Oh, he's a monster. Flipping heck. Oh, he gives me a run for my money. Ah. That's one good thing about playing with you virtually, Simon. It's zero petrol money, mate, on your invoice. <laughs> Fantastic, Simon. Thank you so much. Right. The hour is nearly up. What have you got to say, you guys? <laughs> Ian says, wow. A lot of people say that when Simon plays. They say, wow. Yvonne is praising Joe for his uh, brilliant work, getting all the screens. So <laughs> Simon says, lovely. Oh, mate, that's quite a hard tune, that. I should have left it till tomorrow, really, and practiced it a bit more. <laughs> And who was that conga player, that bon a bongo player that sneaked in? Cheeky monkey. Ah, <laughs> oh, lovely. Thanks, guys. Oh, Midge, how you doing? <laughs> oh, you had a little chat about the clothes and uh, my my agent up in. Um, Stokesley in North Yorkshire, Mr. Philip Udall. He's, uh, he's going to source me a vinyl deck. I like the sound of that, mate. Um, oh, Celia, you remember Gato too. Oh, Roddy Lomra. Thank you, Duncan. Chiang Mai. Wow. Isolating in Chiang Mai. <laughs> Is it a good or a bad thing to hope that Snakey has enough different shirts to see us right through the lockdown? Hmm. When will the shirts be ready to order? <laughs> oh. oh, there's millions of you. Brilliant. Right. Anything I've missed out? Oh, yes, so I was telling you that Celia sent me a, a photo of her pond. And I see it's, it's great, the community that's growing. Somebody was giving me a great recommendation for hand cream and... Sally sent me a rabbit mug because I broke mine. That, that just arrived. Thank you, Sally. And uh, it's great. I just mentioned something and it appears. I could do with five grand. <laughs> Actually, I, I forgot. That's another commercial break. I forgot. If you did, did want to chuck anything in the tip jar, go ahead. But it's a free service. It's no obligation. Um, yes, yeah, so or the oh, Celia's Pond, man. I was telling you about my newts that have disappeared, but you'll be as thrilled as I was to know that at least one of them's come back. I've never seen him twice, or her, seen him, seen them twice today. So I'm optimistic that maybe the other ones are hiding under rocks and stuff. But she's got tadpoles and toad spawn and shubunkins. I don't really know what they are. I think they're fish. But she sent me a picture. I had severe pond envy, honestly. <laughs> so thank you again for your time thanks for being with me we are the snaky family now back tomorrow at 7 o'clock a bit of a sax workshop Sunday morning at 11 o'clock it should be a bit less painful this week because hopefully they won't steal another hour from us but you just never know you never know what's going to happen these days Thank you, Jane. Thank you, David. Thank you, Steve. And thank you, Craig. More beer vouchers. And uh, thank you, Alex. It was so good. Just half an hour, but just having a little drink and a catch-up. Just felt so civilised and lovely. Let's do the more of that. So, um, what time is it? Okay. I'll say goodbye, I think been rattling away for an hour taking up far too much of your time it's been a great pleasure thank you very much mr simon goulding i shall endeavor to play that better next time and uh, thank you for your company it's been so good and uh, it's a warm friendly lovely thing and uh, we'll catch up tomorrow night maybe seven o'clock then the same time again sunday evening seven o'clock Spread the word, tell your friends, and uh, thank you Sally, thank you Joe, 
And uh, so what we do is, before I press this button that says stop streaming, I count to three and we all shout out together in all these far parts of the world, in Chiang Mai and Havant and Stokesley and Kent. We all shout, stop streaming. Okay, but <coughs> on the count of three. Uh, one, two, three. Stop streaming. Ba, 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 ba.